Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking a little bit about the differential diagnosis for red legions that may present to you as the dentist in the dental chair. It's going to be a quick revision overview, so look out for more detailed videos on some of these conditions on the channel. So we'll get straight into it. We're going to categorize the different types of red legions that can be seen in the mouth by the main causes and talk through each of these groups one by one. So we'll talk about vascular causes for red legions, inflammatory causes, purpura, erosive, reactive, atrophic and neoplastic types. We'll start with the inflammatory types of red patches and these are typically the most common type that you'll see. They can be viral, so stomatitis here just means inflammation of the mucous membranes of the mouth. And some examples of this would be those caused by herpes simplex virus, which can give the classical cold sores on the lips and herpes zoster. You can also get red inflammatory patches caused by fungal infection, for example candida, and you might see something like this in an asthmatic patient using a steroid inhaler who doesn't rinse their mouth out afterwards. Another cause for inflammatory red patches is mucositis, so like stomatitis, mucositis also means inflammation of the mucous membranes, but we tend to use this term when the lesions are caused by anti-cancer agents like chemotherapy or radiotherapy whereas stomatitis is typically used to describe non-cancer-related oral conditions, especially viral infections like the ones we mentioned. The last type of inflammatory red patch we're going to be talking about are the immunological types, so for example sarcoidosis, a rare autoimmune condition which typically affects the lungs and skin, and can cause red inflammatory lesions in the mouth. Also, plasma cell gingivitis, which is quite rare, it's where you have generalised erythema and swelling of the attached gingiva, thought to be caused by a hypersensitivity reaction to some kind of antigen. There's also graft versus host disease. This can happen in patients who've received stem cell or bone marrow transplants. T cells in the donated stem cells or bone marrow attack the patient's own body cells because the donated cells, i.e. the graft, see the host's body cells as foreign and attack them, and so you can get this appearance in the mouth. So we've talked about inflammatory causes for red patches. Let's move on to reactive causes. A classic example of this is pyogenic granuloma. This commonly affects pregnant women, which is why you may have heard it being referred to as a pregnancy epulis. It's essentially a benign overgrowth of granulation tissue typically seen on the gingival margin, but it can occur at any site. We're now going to touch on erosive types of red legions. This can be as simple as a burn from heat, for example, burning the roof of your mouth eating a hot slice of pizza, or you might also see chemical burns in patients. The classic example of this is aspirin burn, where patients hold aspirin tablets in their mouth in an attempt to relieve dental pain, but actually end up getting painful red erosions and ulcers. Other erosive examples include vesiculobullis disorders, which you'll know are a group of diseases characterised by blisters and erosions that can affect the skin and mucous membranes. Some examples we see in the mouth are pemphigus and pemphigoid, which are both autoimmune conditions. We also have oral lichen planus, which characteristically presents as white patches, but both the erosive and atrophic forms of the disease can give red legions too, with or without white striations. Next we have the atrophic types of red legions, so this is where the epithelium is intact but thinned. An example of this is erythema migrans, also known as geographic tongue, which I actually have too and it comes and goes. We don't know why it happens, but essentially you get these patches on the tongue that look like countries on a map that move around, hence the name. In technical terms, it's described as localised depapillation of the filiform papilla on the dorsum of the tongue. So similar to the erosive type of lichen planus, atrophic lichen planus can give red legions too. The cause of lichen planus isn't fully understood, but we know it's a cell-mediated autoimmune condition affecting keratinocytes. Next we have glossitis, which can be caused from iron or other deficiencies, and this too can give a red atrophic appearance to the tongue. Lastly, erythroplasia, which is a red patch that is pre-malignant, so it's an important differential diagnosis for us to think about when examining a lesion, and something we would need to biopsy. 
Moving on to vascular types, you might see lingual varices, which is just a variation of normal anatomy, commonly seen on the ventral side of the tongue. Also, telangiectasias, which are essentially small, dilated blood vessels that occur near the surface of the skin or mucous membranes. Hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia is a rare genetic disorder where these lesions can be seen. And lastly, hemangiomas, sometimes called strawberry marks, which are benign tumours of endothelial cells commonly seen on the lower lip. If you apply direct pressure to them, they should blanch, which can help differentiate them from pigmented lesions. Moving on to neoplasms. Our first example is squamous cell carcinomas, which can present as red lesions as well as white. Next we have the amelanotic melanoma. And thirdly, Kaposi's sarcoma, which is a tumour caused by human herpes virus 8, and this can have a red, blue or purple appearance. If you're still with me, the last group of causes for red lesions that we'll talk about today in this video are the purpura category. Purpura is the name given to the red or purple spots seen on the skin or mucous membranes due to internal bleeding from small blood vessels. This can occur in the mouth because of trauma. For example, in this case, an elderly patient continued to wear a fractured denture for several days. Platelet disorders, such as thrombocytopenia. And lastly, a condition called angina bullosa hemorrhagica, where patients develop blood blisters. If you've made it to the end of this video, well done. It's a lot of information to take in. Thanks for watching.